Whoa. Good morning, everybody. Welcome, Coffee with Creators. This is Adorama itself at 42 West 18th Street. This is not a green screen. This is the actual store. If you're around, come hang out. I got this guy with me, Mark Mann, but we're going to talk to him in a second. First, I want to thank today's sponsor, Boom, Intel. You are watching us being streamed by Intel right now, a 13900K that I custom built for this stream, this event space that we stream everything out of that you guys always go, how does it look so clear and amazing? I built it on Intel. So go check out the links below for all that stuff. And whoops, we are drinking Brulita coffee. All over the place. Such a professional. Shut up. Shut up. Someone was screwing. Thanks, Brulita, for the coffee. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Thank you for the coffee, Mr. Miranda. Oh, man. It's the least I can do. We don't pay you guys, so. What? <laughs> <laughs> Nice seeing you. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's free coffee, bro. All right. All right. If you guys don't know, this is the legendary Mark Mann. And he is, I think you've gotten a lot of credibility around the around for the, the, the tone of your work, the class level of your work. But you've been shooting a lot of celebrity portraiture. You recently just put out a book of dance photography, which is gorgeous. By the way, we're going to get into that. Uh, you're a Leica shooter. So you know right there, he's, he's you know, one of those guys. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Mark, thanks so much for coming out. I can I can justify being a like issue. I know you can, and I and I and I I know you're looking for something in your shots, and I'm gonna pull up your Instagram while we are talking to you because I don't I don't think people understand that you're constantly looking for something, and and you're looking for genuine in your subject, but you're looking for image quality from the tools you're using. It's it, you know it's definitely a, a balancing act, though, right? I mean, you know that from your work. It, it's it's if if you know, the gods of photography are on your side and you get the facial expression you need or you get that little thing that happens between you and the subject and you take the picture at the right moment and you just happen to have a really great lens and camera and light, then you, you get something better than you would if you didn't. You know, you know what I mean, though, right? I mean, yeah, I'd prefer the shot. And if it, you know, if you said to me, "Listen, we're 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 gonna we're we're gonna give you we're gonna, you can you can get the shot, and you can either get the shot you want on a shitty camera, like a really shitty camera, <laughs> or we can give you not quite the shot that you want on a superb camera." I would take the shot on the bad camera all the time. Yeah, it, but when you can get them both together, that's when the, the photo gods line. have aligned. Yeah, and I think there's a you say there's a balancing act, but in the end, what the shot is is really what's key, right? And I think as a portrait photographer, you're just kind of always staring through someone to kind of get that magic out of them. But I think Mark's real magic is this is like the most charming guy you'll ever meet in this industry. He knows how to talk to you, get you comfortable in like seconds. You're sitting in front of his lens and he's stealing your soul and you don't even care. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. Like, uh, it's it's soul stealing. It's, called, it's conversation, man. And this is what's really interesting about that um, is that people say, uh, people say, oh, how, how do you learn? How do you do what you do? It's like, well, you go through life, hopefully communicating with people, right? Whether... Yeah. Whether that person is a person that I said hello to when I came in the store, and she was down and she said hello, and I didn't just go, huh? I went, hey, how you doing? How's your day? Yeah, right? I'm, too, I'm too from New York for that. Yeah, but yeah, but <laughs> but yeah, yeah. New York has kicked a little bit out of me. Yeah, um, and, and 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 I'm not quite as uh, vivaciously friendly as I used to be. But when you've got somebody sitting there that you've got to take the photo, nine out of ten times they don't really want to be there, right? Right, nine yeah, exactly. Times. Nine out of ten times I probably don't really want to be there. <laughs> so, <laughs> Sounds familiar, Fernando? So you've got two people that don't really want to be there but have a job to do, right. and hopefully you're on the same level of, let's just get it done, and then we can both go on to do what we well, want to do. Well, you're also shooting high-profile celebrities, which only have a few moments usually, right? Oh, no, that's just, that's just this nonsense about, listen, I have a hard out in four minutes. <laughs> well, you have a hard out in four minutes. And then you start taking the photos, they're happy, you're happy, and all of a sudden... Oh, I thought you had a hard out 15 minutes. Oh, no, but this is okay. So a lot of the time it's just I understand the protection from – these people are really well protected. Right. So I understand the protection from a publicist or somebody who's going to say, oh, we have a hard out in 18 seconds. Yeah. Uh, but and it's not really like that. 
it, it can be if you're not doing the job right. Oh man, if that's you're not the doing thing. the job right, they're gone. Right. Yeah. Right. Totally. And I think there's that's the the real key is your ability. Like one of your superpowers, I feel, is just your ability to get someone so comfortable so quickly in your in in your zone. And you you know when they're sitting in front of your lens, there's a it's a house. It's like you're bringing them into your your room. You're getting them a little cozy. It's very very personal, and I want to keep it that personal. And um, you know, there's a lot of times though that you. You gotta, you gotta make some really quick decisions about how you're gonna approach this, right? And like what you can get away with now, because I speak softly with a Scottish accent. If somebody thinks I've said something, they're not sure if I've said it, so I always get like a second chance. So if it's like, wow, you were really ugly today, like what? <laughs> I said how great you look today, so you can push it in the direction that you want instead of it being led by them, right? And then you know. Also, if you if you if you just bring people down to a human level, right? And a lot of the people you're it works across the board. If you're talking to somebody who is an A-list uh, actor celebrity, you know, bottom line is they had breakfast and you had breakfast, right? Or maybe they didn't have breakfast, but uh, you know. So, uh, do you have breakfast at the hotel this morning? Do you have the eggs? Yeah. How are the eggs? The eggs good? And they're like, what? Yeah, yeah the, the eggs were good. Did you? The, you know, and all of a sudden you're on human topics and it, it's human stuff. And like you know, I just ask. You ask me how my kid is. I'm going to give you 45 minutes. Oh right? my gosh, that's what I'm saying. So, oh, how are the kids? Do kids doing okay? You know, I don't know what one's 14 now. Oh yeah, Johnny's doing or whatever. So like, it, it just try and keep everything on on that level. But if you come into these situations. Now I'm lifting myself up because you know you know me I'm on the floor, <laughs> so you know I'm just trying to find a balance. I got to raise myself and kind of pull them down to me a little bit, you know. But when you go in there and you're like, "Oh, Mr. Miranda, it's such an honor." <laughs> Nah, you know, I think there's a, first of all, it starts before you even get there. I think your look, your demeanor, your body language, you're setting a tone before they even get there, right? Especially mm. if you have a crew with you, you're setting that tone, that that attitude for the environment that they're in. So I think you've already made choices, whether you realize it or not, to get someone to that point. I, you know, forget the book on the amazing images. We know you can shoot. Give me a book on uh, how to get them done in 13 seconds. I want to hear the, how do I break their brain and get you them know, to chill out in 14 seconds? Uh, Danny DeVito came into the studio once, and I was kind of super excited for Danny DeVito to come in, right? So he comes in, and uh, he sits on a stool, and, hey, Mr. DeVito, great to see you, man. Thanks for coming. I was excited to get... Stop touching my microphone. They're telling me Did you see well, you're that? all the way up, bro. I don't know what to tell you. Do you want me to speak louder? So DeVito comes in, <laughs> sits down, <laughs> and... Uh, I say, hey, Mr. DeVito, do you, you want something to drink? What, what, do you want coffee or something? He goes, oh, I have a Diet Coke. So uh, I go, I, you know, somebody rushes off to do it, and I, I, I got it. Don't you right, know? I don't right. need somebody to, you know. So I go back, get Diet Coke, put a straw, uh, come back, put a straw in it, and hand it to him, and he just leans forward right? <laughs> <laughs> and starts drinking. He just <laughs> out the straw, and I'm left holding it, and he goes, "Thank you very much." And I'm like, "Oh, that's cool." <laughs> Sell it on eBay. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and then I can't, you know, like I would say to him, like throughout the shit, do you want, could, can I get you something? That's a Diet Coke. And I would bring it out and he would drink through the straw and I'd put it back down. So I think if you can get to that kind of level where there's humor yeah. and there's like, you know, yeah. someone going, oh, human connection, then that's that's what it is. And, you know, you got to break it down. But there's sometimes times, man, I fail, though. I mean, you, get, you can get a good photo, but you've totally failed at the communication you can't drive there when there's chemistry and all that kind of stuff yeah. but I, I think one of the things you do that i think a lot of us do and don't really like push out that we're like hey we do this i call it stretching our legs exercises you'll actually go hit up a corner in new york set up say hey i'm gonna be here all day if you want your portrait taken and you'll have a line down the block and shoot and i know you do this because like four of my friends were like mark shooting today i'm gonna go <laughs> you remember kitty crystal you shot oh, kitty i love crystal? kitty i've known kitty a long time and she was like mark shooting today. I'm like i know mark good for you shout out to kitty crystal <laughs> but that means you're taking anyone with the sh uh, you know you don't know who's going to show up where they're coming from what headspace they're in practice. how comfortable they're going to be and you get sharper it's practice right it's practice and you got to practice your craft you know the best way to practice your craft with the camera in your hand but if you don't have a camera in your hand practice your craft by say by talking to somebody and see what they say back how does 
how does like smiling at somebody make them react? You know, Depends how, what you look like. I smile. They're like, ah, nah, <laughs> that's not true. There's your demeanor, I think, sets the tone so quickly. I think people already prejudge how they're going to come at you 100%. From, the, from just appearance and yeah. body language before anything. I have a rep of being very abrasive and I talk hard when I don't mean to be hard. So like I already am in that kind of like and it took me a while to realize that the portrait started before I even got the headspace to shoot. You know, it took a long time for me to realize that that we're psychologists at some point. But I think shooting anyone at any time when they come up to you is such a, a, a rewarding experience as a photographer. And you're going to walk away from that with more than they got out of it, usually. And then you're going to take that with you. It's 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 one of these like really golden things you can't get any other way. And Mark also is I, I, I have a lot of respect for Mark for a few things. That's one of them. But he's never been like shook a lot. The one. When, uh, you've never seen it. <laughs> wait. So a long time ago, we had to do an event in the old event space. And for for reasons unforeseen, it all fell apart and we needed somebody quick. Mark showed up with a messenger bag full of lights and he's like, I guess we'll do this. you know. And, and he didn't even think about it. He's like, what What do you want me to do? Didn't go, oh, man, how many people? What is this? Didn't know a thousand questions. He set up a laptop. He's, he's, he vaped for five seconds, took a breath. <laughs> You vaped right in that seat. I was like, okay, dude. <laughs> but you did it. You did it. I, mean, I was fine. Do you remember that? Because it was this guy, because we were doing a live thing. Yeah, let's just not go into the, the super details. No, I'm not going to. No, no, no. no I, so I photographed and I was doing some, like, you know, come up, sit down. We'll yeah, that's do right. Some you anybody out of the crowd, yeah. too. So one guy goes, uh, oh, the highlights are really brown out on that skin. I was like, nah, I don't think they are, buddy. I think they look all right. And I s oh, no, 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 he didn't say that. He said, wow, that bright is so light. Uh, that light, light is so bright that I could never put my subject under it. And I was like, really? So I, I think, come on, come on, come up and sit up. And he came up and he sat down the bright. I said, is that light all right? And he goes, yeah, so oh, let's take some photos. Yeah. And he was, you know, it, I just think that if you should just try and avoid, listen, um, Jacob, my business partner sitting here, and he's going to laugh at this. And if any of people that I know well are listening, but I try and avoid conflict all the time. <laughs> You're just lazy. But Jake, yeah, I, you know, maybe lazy is like, what's the easiest path? But I've definitely. <laughs> yeah, so, and if my wife is listening, she's probably going to come and smack me right now for saying that, especially after, <laughs> especially after this morning's argument. But the bottom line is if you try, it's like, if you don't say no to people, right, it takes two to, to fight. Yeah. So if this person's being aggressive with you, you just kind of take it. Bottom line is, you got to get your picture and leave. Yeah. That's it. You got to get your picture. But you got to be confident in what you're doing. When that guy goes, I don't think I can put a model under there, and you go, I do this all the time, and you're wrong. Let's go do this. But, a but but nicely, Seth. Man, nicely. I got no yeah. Time for nice Bobby thing. Bobby <laughs> D'Onofrio. Uh, Bobby D'Onofrio. Bobby. Vincent D'Onofrio. Vincent. I'm sorry. That's a. Vincent D'Onofrio once famous came. Nah, uh -huh. He came in <laughs> and uh, I said, "Hi, Mr. D'Onofrio. I'm going to take your picture." And he says, "And I'm not allowed to use language here. I've been told by Seth." But he <laughs> said something like, "All right, you Scottish, no, you Irish beep. Let's beeping, do this beeping beep beep photo shoot." And, like, and I was like, "Wow, is he? Is this real? He's really quite aggressive, and he's a big guy." And I said. Uh, how am I going to deal with this in my head? And I just replied, okay, you beeping beep. <laughs> Sit the beep down so I can take your beeping photograph. You match. Yeah. You just match. went to him. Right. Big laugh. Yeah. But he's messing with you because, you know, people can be bored. I mean, sometimes, you know, I wouldn't do it to you because I have way too much respect for you. But so, no, that's not, that's a lie. I just know you'd call me out. Oh, it. We'll never get away with it. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes, you know, I'm just like, somebody asked me to do something, I say it, and then I just, I'm going to be an asshole today. <laughs> you know, it just happens. Uh, Steven C in the chat is saying Mark's photos look like they're took with a 1950s graph, like Super D. It's just amazing. Uh, oh, the, Some, the photos you took with the nice Ah, uh, okay. I actually, I have a Super D also. So does Dan. Dan pulls out the Super D all the time. Mine has an air bubble in the glass, and it does this weird thing. And I, it, it's like in the lens. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's weird. It's a. It's. It means an old, old camera. There's mold in it. All the sorts of stuff. You know how it is. Two by three. Buy a new lens. Eh, I don't feel like going to swap meets anymore. You know how much money I spent at swap meets getting vintage gear. At the what is a swap meet? Some guy stole a bunch of stuff. They throw it on a blanket in, uh, usually on Canal Street, and they go. 
No, for real. That's really what it is. I mean, you really are going to people that collect junk, uh-huh. and they sell it for a living, and they're basically going to places that people often meet up with. And you're, it's it's a flea market. It's you know, uh, you know, the guys that gather the junk, and a lot of guys knew me. And would call me and be like, I'm going to be here on Sunday and I have a graph like this. I know you're going to want. I'm like, oh, Oh, for real. Yeah. So once you get known for it. So I have, I mean, Fernando knows I have cases and cases of just vintage stuff that was half projects. I was going to modify to do this. You know, I mean, really going to modify it. I I did modify a Polaroid 110B into a four by five and uh, like a handheld four by five. Why? Yeah. I ask myself (laughs) all the time. Um, I sometimes I well as young one and you go oh this is a flex no you should are you shooting any film uh, I do still shoot four by five film once in a while right. I do have a lot of thirty five millimeter film in my fridge the problem is, is that uh, one it's almost all expired and I have to like do the math two I really don't feel like spending the money every time I shoot and three I haven't really been feeling like shooting something after I've done two camera releases, a demo in here, and the commercial work that pays the rent. So I, it's hard. You know, know I, first of all, I'd say to you, you're, not, you're just not showing no dedication to your craft. Thank you. I, I mean, know, that's, I know, that's, I know. No, but I mean, I, I you know, I'm totally <laughs> he, with you. But He has no respect for <laughs> it. <He has> no <laughs> but I am, I am being recently shooting a load of film. Yeah. Um, not really yeah. for commercial work, medium, 35, and, you know, uh, we, I mean, we've been talking. We were talking about it earlier about you know c- people constantly bringing out new cameras and new firmware updates and new this and new that and new this and new that. And you know, as a human being, you you follow it and you feel that oh my god, it's got another megapixel. I have to buy it immediately. <laughs> so what I've done to kind of write myself on that is I've gone on eBay. Um, I bought some film cameras, right? So one I bought is uh, Leica Flex, nice. the first. You know the first R series with the lens. I got it for I think three hundred and eighty nine dollars oh. with the lens, right? Fully working with the meter, and I've taken photos with that. And you show me, uh, I mean, they're different, they're film, but to me, like, it doesn't matter the megapixels, doesn't matter the 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 features. It's just like you expose it, you take a photo, and I think it's so refreshing for all of us that get into this rat race of got to upgrade, got to do better. Yeah. I think it's really important to sometimes go, you know, what what we have to do as photographers is upgrade our skills and not rely on our cameras to do something better. I don't think it's upgrading skills. I think it's thinking and, and creating differently. And the, pro- the thing with, like, cameras for me is it's going to have its own personality at some level, and you right. have to meet in the middle with the gear because it's going to deliver something, whether it's, it's this color science right. or this right, type right, of lens, right. soft on the edges, super clinical sharp. There's something happening, there and you've got to understand and go, is this the mood I'm in today? Is that what I'm shooting for today? I actually get more into new light, right? If there's like a, a, some type of light source that I haven't messed with before or some kind of tone out of it because, you know, you want to break yourself down into like the basics, shoot with a single tungsten bulb, and watch how much color you're going to get out of what people think is like old hat. A hundred percent. I'm with you. Right? Well, you know, it's really funny you say that. I, about six years ago, seven years ago, maybe eight years ago, maybe nine years ago. Could have been a decade ago. <laughs> Do you know where you are, sir? Some, some, <laughs> some time ago, um, I got an opportunity to move into an office space with some friends of mine that were doing an ad, ad, starting an ad agency and there was like I had about they said in this area here if you want to just use a photo studio you can and, oh my god that's fantastic saw the photos went over there it was down in Canal Street got in the building and it was a five floor walk up oh I remember you talking about yeah. this yeah 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 and uh, I was like alright but look at all the space and it's cheap and I'm with people I know and you know, I don't often need a studio, but it'd be fun to have one. So moved in there, and then we go out, you know, on our first location shoot, right? And uh, it's me and two assistants, like, walking down these rickety stairs <laughs> with, like, fear, like, falling down the stairs. There's no glamour in this industry, yeah. kids. And uh, uh, So we did this a couple of times, and then, like, I think the third or fourth time I was going to go out and shoot, I said, just bring that ring light. Well, that's it. I was like, yeah. Yeah. So for a long time, I started using ring light and yeah, really your portraits, really getting into it, right? Yeah. But it wasn't out of some experiment. It was about genuinely out of the fact that I really did not just want to carry stuff up and down stairs anymore. So convenience, and uh, you know, I'm. It, it's true. It's like you know, sometimes it's like if I'm if when I get by the time I get set up and start doing this shoot, 
um, am I going to be in any headspace to do it? If I just lighten everything up, you know, you know, like you've done in here, you've kept it super simple, right? <laughs> Oh, you know what? You got to break me You know, there's nothing going on here that's fancy. It's just two guys having a chat with 47 cameras. Listen, a lot of screens. No, but what I'm I saying, no, 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 I yeah, built this for us. Right? I built this for our people. But no. you know, but you know what I mean. And that's oh that's what's been so nice about this journey shooting film again. I should have brought in some examples, but I have a, you know, my first camera that I perfect professional camera camera that i bought for college is an, a nikon fe with a 50 mil 1.4 lens yep. and i'm shooting that right now and i really really dig in what's coming and it just as i say we've got to keep up with the trends we've got to know what's going on we've got to but sometimes just taking yourself back to some really basics yeah is a nice way to go well it's also uh i'm one of the i'm a type of creative that i actually i feel i get better out of when i'm limited and that's where you start trying to exploit and sharpen and really work with what you're working with. So that's why when people are like, ah, I'm really stuck, cool. Only shoot with a lens you'd never shoot with before. Cool, you shoot color all the time, only shoot black and white for a month. 100%. And get yourself in a box 100%. to break out of the box. We used, to, we used to do a thing at a photo assistant for a while, and we used to do a thing that it would be, um, we'd pack up for a shoot, and then he would take out one piece of equipment that I was going to need, so I'd have to work around that. So it was, you know, because... <laughs> That's fun. I was like, come on, man. You got to. <laughs> you brought all the flash, but you haven't bought a trigger. Um, yeah, Mark, you're going to work with a, the, the, you know. A nice so, cable. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Or not even a cable you're going to use. The so, yeah, I, I'm totally into that. It's like push yourself. And that segues super nicely into what you're just about to say. Look yeah, at me. I'm I, a professional. I, I, before we, like, get on a runaway train here, I wanted to bring up your book because, uh, I, first of all, was it WPI that you showed me the book? Was that where you were debuting it? No, we had one with us, right? Yeah. And you were there, and was I was there. Was that when you were doing? You did my portrait. Was that that? Was that VPI or imaging? That was the imaging. 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 That was in January. Yeah, Man, it feels like forever ago. But um, Mark throws this book down in front of me, and it's stunning. It's gorgeous. Uh, and I, I, let's just pull it up. Let's just do it. So you had this incredible space, and you're like, "How can I make the most out of the space?" Is that kind of where it started, or where did it start? No, it was a bit. It was a bit different, Seth. You know, it was a pandemic. It was born in the pandemic, and basically, you know, who wants anybody like four feet away from them with, you know, with a camera, right? During the <laughs> pandemic, you know, nobody wants to leave their house, so. I was really stuck for what to do, you know, how could I, so I went out and I decided to be a landscape photographer, but the light wasn't right. Right. Oh, and I had like no patience. I waited seven minutes. What, light what still crap. What you see in landscape? Nothing. I knew it. Absolutely <laughs> nothing. You don't see faces in the trees. There's nothing. I'm right? just like, oh, look at, I get so I went out, well, look at the light. It's like, oh, the light's crap. <laughs> Every time, so, even if you get a good landscape shot, right? I feel like good for a hotel lobby. I'm not, I'm just, I just can't get into it. 100%. But so I, then I went on to be a drone photographer for about 15 minutes. <laughs> flew, you know, fl flew, flew my drone and I'm like, ooh, golf course bunker. <laughs> you know, no, really, maybe 20. Uh, and then, oh, well. I'm gonna I'm gonna do some incredibly creative still lifes. Oh my There's my coffee cup and my phone. So I I was I was trying, but I'm not fine. And I actually began to realize that it was nothing to do with the photographs. I was lonely when I was doing photographs, and that that I I need I need I need the energy of other people to make photographs. Yeah. I reckon if I had a really great team, I could do good still lifes. Right, but if I'm me by myself on a landscape, come on. If it's not talking with you. If yeah, it's not, if I it's not. It. It. So my sister-in-law is a choreographer, and she's an amazing choreographer. And uh, she said, you know, all the dancers that I work with are in the same position. They're doing Zoom dance classes Jeez. from their apartments. I said, whoa. And we, we did have a space at that time that was amazing um and i said all right let's photograph oh she says photograph some dancers and i'm like but they move <laughs> i don't do things that move much i don't know how to. so it was one on the floor and focus <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> and i wanted to use so i it's so i get so my my go-to camera is like a s medium format 120 lens it's a beautiful portrait lens um and i wanted to use that camera and that lens um so i could be pretty far back to get the full end stuff and 
um, daylight, which I've never shot with. And daylight is weird. It changes by itself. Crazy, I know. Unbelievable. It's like, what's like, going what? on? Oh, man. <laughs> it's getting darker and darker and darker. It's like, what's going on with the lights? Do you mean oh, it's <laughs> not the lights. You mean oh, that? just turn it up a bit. I, Mark's daylight. Come on, oh, okay. man. Yeah, what, yeah. Mr. Photographer over here, you don't notice the light changing? Come on, boss. Well, no, you, listen, as a, as, as a studio I shooter, you, yeah, you, you don't, right? I, I mean, know. and you're into it. We're so used to control, it's insane. So this was like 180 degrees for me, and it was, how do I do this? How do I do it? In daylight, these people are moving, but most importantly, um, for me, what was really, that is that a Mac? Yeah. God, that screen looks really nice. Oh, thank you. I, uh, wow, is that calibrated and everything? I, 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 uh, everything's a different screen. Right. But that I, looks good there. Well, I try to do all my work through a Mac screen because I feel like that's where most people are going to view it anyway on an iPhone or something like that. So I'm uh -huh. like, let me stay in their color space, P3 color space and all that. Is that P3? Yeah, P3. I know that. Yeah, color it's better spaces. than P2, you know? Yeah. And P1 was uh, where we all... Well, anyway, <laughs> so... <laughs> they, 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 uh... So yeah, 180 degrees for me, and it was really trying something different. And so much of the photographic skill that I thought I had, or you know, the one percent that I thought I had, got knocked down to like I know nothing about photography. You know, you were talking when you showed me the book. You're like, look at where I, he he doesn't go look at my tones. What do you think? No chest out, no ego. He goes, look at all the places I missed focus. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the first thing you said, and he's put, he's going a page to show me, and I'm like. Well, Mark, but, this still but, looks amazing. But but that but that's the thing about you know that that's the thing is that if you're not look if as soon as you think you know anything about photography, yep. then you're in trouble. Yep, exactly. And you kind of got to be in it. It's like you're like, let me find the next. Let me hop to the next thing. Right. I, mean, I wore this shirt for you. I wore this. <laughs> funny, funny you say that. I've discovered on my Leica SL that there's something called eye tracking. <laughs> now I know that you guys have probably known this. For, <laughs> <laughs> for quite some time, right? But honest to go to goodness, honest to whatever deity yeah. we believe in, whoever that is, I've never used it before for till about six, seven months ago, and it's really quite impressive. You know, someone I've, you get fo pictures I, in focus I, a lot. I get it. I get it. It's crazy. You know what was funny was uh, I, I forgot who it was. Forgive me if you're watching. Uh, you were, you photographed someone that I know, and she was she kept saying, "I don't get it." He goes like this, and then does like an S with his lens, and he shoots like because he's pre-focusing where he's at, and then he's recomposing. It's like unless you shoot, I can imagine that being like, "I don't understand why he's making an S with his lens like this and right. freaking me out." But yeah, I mean that's where we came up with single point go, and you know when you get into the you have to get to a point where you can trust the gear to be there for you. So if you go, I'm not quite there. Yeah, I'm not I autofocus. There. I don't know if it really knows what I'm trying to do. Hmm. Well, well, it's the, you know because that little box comes up now and then you can move it around with the joystick. It's you amazing. Know, you know what I'm talking about, right? So I kind of move it to where I want to be, and it's then auto that little focus. <laughs> yeah, and that little box stays there. And then if if I'm just in a zone, I'm thinking I'm not thinking about it. So every photo I take, I'm putting the face where that is instead of like putting the face where I want it. it it's just, it messes with my head. But it this does, but yeah. this eye focus has is, is really changed things. But it's also led me to, you know, the disadvantages for me is like, wow, I have now 100 photos in focus that I have to look at instead of just nope, 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 nope. Well, that one's a focus, we'll go there. Yeah. You know I, mean? I mean, I'll be honest. So it's, like, made it more, it's made it more difficult. The technology has not only been able to let me shoot faster, but... I'm the type of photographer that tries to get as many looks out in, in one shot. So I'll drive him crazy with a video. I'll do 16 different setups, but we're done in three hours because I got this, the technology with me now. So I look at all these shots and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to put them out as a video. And now you can watch, look at the, I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm not into calling anymore. I'm done wasting my time. Here's a bunch of great shots. You might like something better than I like a different frame here. Take them all. Uh. I think we're ingesting images differently now. Interesting. I don't think I'm, we're looking I'm, at that single frame like we used to. You are I definitely am. doing that. I am. You know, but I am because I only have one that's good out of the fourteen thousand that I shoot. So hey, let's talk about that for a second because you shot my porch and you posted one that was like, "How is that the shot? Did you just randomly grab them?" No. No. Oh, come on, that one. I was like, ah, come on. Maybe I did it to mess with you. Yeah. Yeah. Potentially. I see the rest of those shots, sir. Okay, I'll send them to you. <laughs> Yeah, no, but it's definitely, definitely, it's definitely, it, it changes all the time, and it changes for the better. And it, you know, there's definitely, um, 
there's definitely so many advantages with the gear, but you know, I think sometimes with the gear, I forget that um, you know, it's just not the it's not the gear. You get stuck on the capabilities of the gear, correct? Rather than and with the I, shot itself, and, and that's you, where you get you you, if you feel like if you're not using the gear to its nth capacity, then you're not making the best photo. And I I, 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 I think that. that I think I think we, retraining your mind. So listen, if anybody is watching. Or listening, shoot a roll of film. Such fun. Or give yourself a limit. Yeah, limit limit yourself. One lens or, yeah, give yourself a limit. You know what I mean? Or even shut off that screen and stop looking at it after you shot it and try to figure out what's going on, you know? So I go up to Maine once a year, um, sometimes twice, but there's this, this shoe store in Maine, right, which has, like, one of a pair of sneakers. Like, you want to buy a pair of sneakers, one pair, right? That, <laughs> You know, there's one pair of walking shoes, whatever. And that's where I buy my shoes. You know why? Because I can't deal with the choice. I go on Amazon to buy something, and I start reading reviews of an $18 product. I, 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 like, am I, am I buying the right back scratcher? You know? <laughs> this guy this said... Is that this, this is pine. This guy <laughs> said that this back scratcher broke after eight months. I don't want that one. And I think it's, you know, so much the same with our photography it's like you know what i'm saying though well, i thank you for choosing this podcast so. uh, <laughs> but that but that's also that's you know like i like i like somebody to help me you know it's like i go into spotify right to listen to music it's the same thing it's like oh we think you'll like these mark why would you think i'd like like some like because the modern machines, the machines country music, it. the machines are owning our lives. They listen to the machine. Just don't fight it. Just just go. Can't man. Let them it's take. Just, listen, we're all just I, batteries for the machines soon. It's okay. Could you remember when <laughs> stuff was curated? Yeah, I do. Yeah, and it was kind of a simpler experience. And I I just I sometimes want somebody to, you know, um, you know, like why 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 do I need this new camera? Mm. Oh, it's got more megapixels. I don't need more megapixels. Well, it's faster. I don't need it to be faster. I can have good. Well, maybe you don't need a new camera. Well, the I think, well, we would try. I know that me and Fernand, we just, I mean, we, me and Fernand have been awake all night for the A93 release from Sony, which is the, you know, the global shutter thing and all that hype. And our job. Does is, film not have a global shutter? <laughs> uh, leaf shutter, technically, yeah. right? Yeah. So I, um, I, and I, and I, we wanted to approach this carefully because we're, what we are basically have to do is translate the equipment for people. Not tell them what they need, but go, this is what it is, and this is what you would apply that certain thing for. Mm. Do, do you need that? It is never our place to tell you what you need, right. how to do it, right. like what the right way. Like, no, this is the tool. Here, here's us translating what the tool is. And we hope, I think, right, that we educated them technique-wise to go, you know what? That would elevate what I'm trying to do, or would make it a faster workflow. Mirrorless was uh, it took. I was slow to get into mirrorless because I was still not really needing what mirrorless was giving me. But then, because I was shooting strobe, I wasn't shooting available. Right, I didn't right, need right, it. Right. Then I got into video, and then I needed faster frames per second. Right. Then I really wanted to see the ambient light while I'm mixing with strobe. And then I was like, I'm in it. I'm in it. I'm in it. I'm in it. And then after a while, it makes more sense because the entire industry is going there. So, do you think? Do you think that's because it makes cameras smaller or lighter? Or do you think it's because people? actually like to see what they're shooting when they're shooting. I think one of the biggest frustrations for photographers years ago or people that were hobbyists were not being able to see what was happening in the moment of shooting because they weren't ready to get the work in to train themselves to shoot light. But that's what made it fantastic. That's what, Yeah, and now we're in a place where you have different challenges and now we're seeing people really lean on their creativity instead of getting bogged down with technicals. So when you see eye autofocus, a lot of people aren't trying to figure out focus. They're just looking at the composition and going for moments, right? So did that help that person? We're different photographers, right? You and me work a little slower. We're kind of just like in it. We're, we're, we're in this environment and atmosphere. Some people are just kind of like, no, I'm, I'm working faster. I want to get this. I just want to make this happen. I don't want to worry about figuring out this thing or doing the math for that or you know, high speed sync versus like, no, they, a lot of people got more involved into photography. People are shooting more than ever before since they're already shooting yeah, before they even get to a camera. Uh, and, you know, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm so with you. The other night we, I was out for a thing and there was like 15 guys in a bar. It was school. I heard this before. No, 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 it was dad's night out for the school dads. And um, I've got a couple of okay, camera. I've got my M11 and my 
bag, which I always have. And somebody said, oh, Mark, take a photo, take a photo. I'm like, am I going to go into my bag <laughs> and take out the Sam 11? <laughs> the laziest or, guy. Or am I not? And the answer is I'm not. I'm going to use this because this is going to do a better, quicker job. And it's for, a different tool. For what, for what we need. Those so. guys are going to want those images as soon as you shot them. You're yeah. going to send it to them right there instead of like, let nah, me get back know. to my Leica. Didn't send it. I'm still waiting for it. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed by the photo. I'm scared to send it out. But no, but you're you're a hundred percent right, and I I genuinely do try and not give people stuff that moment. Really, you know? Yeah, try not to, try not to. It's just it's just habit. I just you, you know if I do if I shoot some, can you send me the JPEGs tonight? Mm, uh, tomorrow, right? Take a breath. It, it just let's take a breather from this and let's you know that uh, we used to have this like forty eight hours of um, make a mess of your pants when. You shot the film. The client's seen the Polaroid, right? You know, back in the day, right? You used to yeah, shoot Polaroid. Pa- yeah. pol- Polaroid's like, oh, my God, that's wonderful. Can't wait to see the film. And you know that you don't necessarily have that. And there was that 48 hours of, well, to get it, to get it. You get your film back, you see it, and you see everything's all right. And at that point, you've had a little moment to digest what you've done. Right. And I think that one of the disadvantages of digital is that we don't get a few seconds to kind of digest what we've done and decide why it's good. And yeah, but see, you're thinking of the shoot as an experience rather than just, uh, the end product is all that matters, right? You really mm. look at it like they are going to remember this moment first, mm. then I'll get them the shot. Mm. And I think a lot of people are just trying to chase shots and show them, look, I did it right away. And, you know, I'm, I'm prone to that. I am a believer of swinging my computer around while I'm tethering and let them see what I'm doing. Oh, yeah, I'll do that too. You yeah, know, 100%. I think it's collaborative. Like, they have to understand where my headspace is. They yeah. don't know what they're looking like. It's, yeah. it's, it, but some people, will, they're not seeing the shots till I'm ready to show them. And I think that the way you approach it is, first of all, we're human. We break that. Now we're talking. Now this is happening. The chemistry's mm. building up. Mm. Then the experience of the shoot's happening. Then that's what they remember. Right. The shot is like a re- memento. Interesting. It's kind of like um, really Pollock that was like, no, you missed the you missed the event. The that that painting of all that splatter is just a is just a souvenir. You missed what happened. It, it, it's funny uh, that what you're saying is something I haven't thought about it that way. But to, when people say, "What's your favorite photo?" It's not because it's the best photo. It's because of the experience you had when you took that photo, right? True. And that 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 that's a big thing for me as I photo doesn't almost matter well do you do that thing where like like i do, I do it as i have shots that no one will ever see but they're 100%. totally for me and they mean a lot you know, yeah and they, they're not the best thing but there's something about it that like hits yeah. you you know yeah yeah i think and then that, you put it you show it to ad agencies this is my personal work oh oh that's so slim what yeah personal work if that, it was personal then you wouldn't be shown like do, do i go into your like you know your your room and say you know well, you know, so what's your personal project? It's personal. You're not seeing it. See, I shoot. <laughs> I, I have it's mine. The, the X100V, the Fujifilm X100V, is my fun camera. Like I love that camera. People don't see any work from it though, from me because it's, all those it's shots. Yours. That's my. Yeah. That's my not work, not for everybody. My world, yeah. and that's part of the reason I absolutely love this camera so much. And it, I just like that I'm getting what I want out of it, and it has a personality that's matching with my personality. And I, I think that's something that you know. I definitely lost for a while, but kind of getting it back now is this ability that not everything or every image I make is for general consumption. And I think that as that's advice that I would give to uh, don't, don't, you know, when you go out, like when you go out to make photographs or street photographs, whatever you're doing, there's, there's certain times where if you can just, uh, it sounds like such a wanky thing to say, but if, if you can just, you know, this is for me. Yeah. Don't think about a client. Don't right. don't think about who's going to like it on Instagram. Don't think about this for me, right? It will develop into something that you want to show the world. But when you show the world everything, you've got nothing left for yourself. And I think I think we're, we're, with digital and everything, we're we're losing a bit of that. Well, I think you know. we're also, and I think you'd agree with this that as what well, we do this for a living and uh, what we're doing it for commercial, like. You're always, it's a, it feels service and it 100%. feels like expectations. And when you're shooting for yourself, you kind of get back to like, oh, it doesn't feel like a job. And then when you go to do the job, 
you're a little bit happier and you're a little more amped to go do it. Right, no, 100%. And I think that, that's that, that's a big part of it. But also what's changing, Seth, and what what's hard for me is like old school photographers, um, sometimes the jobs aren't what the jobs were. I mean, it's yeah. evolving. So, you know, it used to be like go out and, you know, uh, we need uh, this and we need that. And you used to have like set thing. And now it's like, well... It, it's just it it's just not as fixed as it was so you you have more opportunities to explore but then you get back into that thing when you have too many opportunities or too much equipment then you bug yourself down and keep it simple yeah but you got to think like you, you're lucky when you have too much opportunity to do stuff right i mean there's some people that are kind of like where's that next job what's up you probably have assistants right that you're handing off stuff to people oh, come on man come on man <laughs> <laughs> tell my wife last week that I'm going to start driving Uber. I mean, you know, it's like we, we don't get paid like we used no, to. We no. I'm still in this because I love what I do. Yeah. I'm not in this because this is what's, you know, the best. I mean, if I went and worked and, I don't know, if I got like a full-time job, or, you know, whatever. But what I'm saying is I'm still in this because I love it. It's, it's, it's So it's funny. I, I did um one of my first assisting jobs for a guy, and he told me, one time he's like, I'm doing this to build an obituary. And I was like, <laughs> what? I was like, what? He goes, when I'm gone, all that's going to be left is all these shots. Right. And I want people to have stacks of it. And that, and, and it stuck with me for so long because that's really what's going to stand up after a while. And the work and your point of view and your way of going about it and stuff like that. If you're stuck in just doing commercial, 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 you've paid the rent. You paid your bills. Hey, you paid your bills. Good guy. Just like any other job. Hmm. The prestige was maybe getting to a level where you were, got those jobs, but the work sometimes you really need something that has substance to to extend past time and yeah you shot a lot of celebrities but those celebrities probably have shots there that they treasure over that commercial shot that's selling that coat you know and that's why they're sitting down they're laughing with you and you recognize when i have to put four smiles together instead of just one frame like you you recognize those things i think that's why they gravitate to want to work with you so much and you set a precedent, right? They've seen so much of the work. And when you have that much of a body of work for them to even recognize what they're stepping into, it's a lot easier when they walk in that room, right? And there's also the, the little backhanded bribes that I have to pay people, you know. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> man. Oh, yeah, man. I know you I know you don't want to do this, but, uh, you know, oh, here's a thousand man. bucks. Um, this is a brand new one for you, Seth. So Are you sure? For you, yeah. I missed your launch party for it. I felt so yeah, bad. Don't worry about but it. I'm going to sign this one for you. Oh, hell yeah. But uh, yeah, but doing a book, man. You know, it's been. I, 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 everybody said, "Mark, do a book, do a book, do a book," and it's like I do not want to end up in the bargain basement bin at Barnes and Noble for the one dollar art. No, books. but he wanted to be at Barnes and Noble so he could run out and get a copy because he forgot well, it today. I didn't forget <laughs> it. I had a, I had a meeting with, I had a meaning with a school psychologist. Okay, all right, let's all leave right, it there. All right, all right. But you know, but so, but I mean, yeah, but how, what what kind of a flex is that? He goes. Oh, is there a bookstore around here? Oh, I'll just get my guy to go to Barnes and Noble. It's not my guy. Know. I begged my business partner to do me a solid that was a flex. But this is the, the, I'm not going to front. This is an absolutely stunning book and um, I do like seeing work that I wouldn't recognize as yours right off the bat. Well, that's the thing. That yeah. that's what to me that's why I did it because it was like do I want to do a retrospective? No, I'm not dead yet. You know, I do it after I'm dead. I, I just I want to create new, I st <laughs> I'm not dead yet. I'm still shitting. No, oh, Mark Man, I thought he was dead. <laughs> Looks at you know how many years I got pigeonholed as like a zombie alien only guy. Like I couldn't shoot fashion or beauty or something right. like that. So then I was like, I'm gonna shoot clean for the next year until people realize I'm not just that. Right, right, you know? right. And well, I, I I get that a lot with well, can Mark shoot people that aren't famous? Oh wow! Oh yeah. I mean, maybe I don't know. If you're not famous, then can I? I, I don't know. Well, you you sit down on a quarter and you go shoot whoever shows up. That's a that's you know. Yeah, it's it's funny. Oh, does he know how to shoot real people? Oh my God! It's like you know, time. it's like all it's like well, that's all I that that's how I make a living shooting real people. Celebrity shit doesn't. Celebrity <laughs> stuff. Come on, man. Two cusses in an hour. I'm I'll Scottish. That I'll wasn't give, bad. I'll give it to you. But that, that's the thing. It's like the pigeonhole thing as well. You know, because you got to try and show that this is what I do. But then you, <laughs> you don't want to get pigeonholed for this is what I do. Yeah. And that's, that's one of the other reasons we did this. Yeah. It's, I did this. The end result of your stuff is always great. I think I get caught up personally. The chase for me is figuring out the shot itself. And I think I get caught up in the technical to kind of see, can I achieve, can I find a solution? That's where all the plastic bag, you know, pizza box stuff came from, right? Like, I just want to be like, could I figure this out if I had nothing? 
and then I kind of don't care about the shot. I just care about like was it technically on? And that it took me a long time to get away from that. And then when you know when you and me started talking, I was like, man, this is this is the kind of mentality I gotta kind of cultivate a little bit better because I'm too stuck on is it clean? Is it right? You know, and there is no right. There's the, you got the substance has to be there, but uh, I do like the fact that I can light with anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, one of the, one of the, you know, I, I teach it a few times a year with the Leica, uh, Leica Academy, um, and I love it. And, you know, some, I walk into some of these, I meet the people for the first time, and I do a very quick review so everybody can kind can, of can get a quick sense of what, who everybody else is. Um, and then, you know, there's people in there and they show me portraits. I'm like, Christ, why are you here? I want to come to your seminar, yeah. buddy, you know, and... Um, but one of the one of the things that we do to start with, oh, that see that see that picture right there, right, uh, the, like girl, the, girl, the girl, the girl, the girl, the girl. Yeah, move along. Uh, I think there's a couple there. So yeah, so that is we'll go back one. That is shot on my first ever camera, the little FE, the Nikon uh, FE on film. Yeah, with the 50 mil. Yeah. So it's cool. It's just like, yeah, we can do that with a phone. But anyway, one of the first projects that we do, that's uh, the RZ. Go back one. RZ. Oh, no, and that's the Leica Flex. That's the RZ67. Yeah. Is that a chrome? No. No? Negative. That's, that's a negative. Yeah. Um, do, do you do darkroom prints? Haven't done for a while. I've been oh, scanning my so prints. Fake. You're so fake. You're so <laughs> That, but uh, I'm not. Anyway, so one of the things that we do uh, when we get to the academy, when we start teaching, is like, here's one tungsten bulb in a right. black space. What does what does a tungsten bulb do when it's right here? What does a tungsten bulb do when it's here? When it's here? When? Sorry, <laughs> you know, what what light can you make with a tungsten bulb? Yeah. Um, and you know, as you say, it's like if you, when you restrict yourself and you just like, photography is magic, man. It's magical. Wow, you got some romance in you. It's magical. Man. It's magic. Yeah, but don't, and some days I look at that camera and I'm like, that might as well be 10,000 tons because I don't feel like going to work right now. Don't you get that sometimes? But you, you, all the time. Like, as I say, my, my Nikon SL2, my Nikon S are cameras that I use for work. Well, if like I'm, you mean. like us, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, <laughs> Jesus, Nikon. Ah! Sorry, Sorry, Kieran, right. John, whoever. Um, so like SL2 and the like S are my, my work cars. Right. But when I go out on the weekend, my son's doing something, I don't want that camera in my hand. I know. So a Leica Flex, you know, or, or a film camera, or the old Nikon, or the Mami RZ, or the Graflex. It's like, this is fun to shoot. This is not work. Interesting. So changing that up and like, you know, like SL2 is a work camera. Oh my God, I put it in my hand. I'm in work mode. I know what's going on. Yeah, that's on. what it is. It's work mode. It's work you, mode. You already get exhausted before you're going. <laughs> but if you can, for me, to change up that camera, I mean, you know, you've seen that little uh, camera I keep in my bag, little paper shoot yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, sometimes that. It's just I don't want to think. I just want to... I just So definitely if you feel that you're in a rut and i'm saying this to you yeah. don't look at that camera find another one that's fun yeah that's what my x100 v is i guess i haven't really i i was gonna go shoot the halloween parade right and i just went straight home i was like i just i've been there man. man i've been there but you know it's i've hanging out with you know phil penman no uh street i think he's one of the best working street photographers in the yeah. world right now amazing shooter and i wanted to do a class with him because I walk through New York City and don't see anything. And he spends a day in New York and produces 10 sees it. legendary, oh my God, how did you see that image? Yeah. Whereas, you know, I walk through New York City as a guy like, you know, standing on his head with a, you know, tossing a pizza around with his legs, you know, while singing. And I just, yeah. I don't see it. Yeah. I, I, I try to remind myself I'm in one of the most amazing cities in the world. But, all the time. but you don't see it, right? I've lived here my whole life. Yeah. So I'm kind of like, uh-huh, that's what the subway is. Yep, <laughs> yeah. That's what, I mean, yeah. I just don't there see it. There is a rat-eating pizza. Um, I, I, yeah. I, yeah, that's I have to step that's over that to get to work. It's a <laughs> but, but Phil, who's lived in New York for a long time, still has this eye and this ability, and I'm really jealous right, of that. Then that means the city's his muse, right? Right. You know, I, 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 it sounds crazy, but there's been... You know, I've been in a relationship with girls that I've chased shots with them because it's just something that was there. You're You've been in a relationship with girls. Shut up. Shut up. One of my, you know, one of my favorite shoots that I probably, it's probably up somewhere. 
she had vitiligo where she would lose pigment randomly. Right, right, right. So I shot large format. She had white eyelashes, and it oh. blew my mind. Right. So I shot macro of her eye, eyelashes, and then I shot really contrasted light to show all the splotches of her skin. And she was like, you know, I'm actually okay with this now. Like, I don't feel weird about it. And I'm like, and I just kept on chasing this vitiligo with her. Like, oh, my God, new spot. We got to do this. You know, like, and when you get connected to a subject, and sometimes it's not human. Sometimes it's a city. Sometimes it's a car. Sometimes, yeah. you know, there's people have done series where they take a sofa everywhere in the world, take a picture of the sofa in different places. Like, you have to find that thing you connect to and chase it. And, and they're talking about this, and everybody's, if you watch Seth's skin tone, he's going to go pale, but <laughs> because I'm going to mention a word, and I'm going to say, so uh, let's talk about politics for a minute. You see, oh, he's gone pale. No, but what, I'm talking about the politics of how things have changed where you saw somebody in the street and you wanted to take their picture right and you know the politics of how you would do that i i find it really hard to do now because as an old guy it's really hard to go up to somebody and say oh you look great can i take your photo yeah. and I, i'm i'm really struggling with that and because back in the day I just it didn't seem so, like, hey, I'm a photographer, you want to take some pictures? I mean, not creepy, but I'm finding that really, really hard right now because like, even going into Union Square and doing what I used to do, hey, can I take your picture? Yeah. Why? What do you want to take my picture? So, uh, you know, I, and negotiating that has been been a struggle. Yeah, we're in a different world now. Right. Um, what what could help? He's so there. relieved that I didn't talk about politics yeah. there. See his face. But it, what could help is you start flipping through images. You can show them examples now. You don't have to like carry around a portfolio. Right, right, right. And you might luck out that someone chills out. I remember me and him used to do uh, new camera videos. Do you remember? I was like, man, I need a dog to shoot. I got to show this dog auto folks, whatever. And these amazing women would have these dogs. Like, hey, do you mind? And like, shoot your dog. Oh, oh my dog. Oh, like they almost were shocked that I didn't want right, to photograph right, right, them. Right. And I'm like, yeah, I don't think I could do this if I had to go up to people randomly and be like yeah you know? it's great practice we we did a thing recently for Dell um, where I was in Union Square and I wanted to make some random portraits in the day and I didn't put it out on Instagram and we're just like standing in Union Square and I go up to hey can I take your picture and like <laughs> Yeah. We have this great video of like, because I was getting frustrated to get, can I take your picture? You say, well, I'm really famous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't even get people to take a free sample in this city. They'll I be know, like, so oh, 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 I got to get to work. Um, so we ended up, we got some really great portraits that day, but like four or five of the people we photographed were European. Okay. Yeah, I know. Like, oh, yeah, of course you can take my photo. Like, you know, Different four countries. or five people like, can I take your picture? Ah, oh, I have to talk to my agency. I'm just doing a snapshot. You have well, to talk to your agency. Well, that's why a lot of travel photographers will be like, here's all these indigenous people that I photo because they're just like, oh, cool. They have no right. like, idea right, that right. there could be some malice there, you know? Yeah. Or they, you but, know, they're, but but the, the reality is there is, unfortunately, a lot of malice. So, I you know. know. Yeah. Or my, the thing that bothers me is the people that shoot homeless. Oh, my God. And it's like an exploitative of oh, someone on their down God. moment rather than like trying Why to help something. Yeah, it's awful. I, it, I'm totally with that. I'm like, this is not a zoo. You know, you remember Photoville? You know Photoville. Yeah, Photoville and Williamsburg. And uh, I, Dumbo. I, Dumbo. And I, I, I love Photoville. And then it, it kind of changed a bit. And it was about, they had a couple of, one year I went a couple of years ago. And it was about, you know, somebody had done a project in starvation and somewhere or whatever and um i go in i was like no i am really impressed by this young person a getting there mm. b wanting to show this and making these images but what is really killing me here is that they have no photographic ability whatsoever and i think sometimes that's missing so it's not enough for us as photog as storytellers just to want to do it and just to get out there and get in that position practice making something that yeah, but that's you the, know what i mean that's by the that same as someone has a message but isn't well spoken so if people can't connect with the way you're delivering 100%. message it's the same thing as i always tell people in this chat knows what we do is a language we're trying to build sentences with what we're we're putting in that frame if it doesn't land it doesn't connect it's not doing it you know mm. what I mean? It's it's not enough to just take the shot. It has to impact. They have to remember it. We're inundated with images all day, every day. If you really want to get over that goal line, you got to kind of, you got to speak well, you know? Yeah, and practice. Yeah. And practice. See, that you goal know, is practice, practice. 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 
Oh my gosh, Mark, man. Yes. It's it, it's I can't just say Mark Man because that's his last name. Like, yeah, Mark you Man. You can you say know? that. Sorry. He is the man with two ends. Check out Moment at the Still Point. Movement. Movement. Oh man, I kept on calling him Moment. Either way, it's a stun- here. So movement. Dancers moving. I get it. I got it. Still Point. Oh boy, here we go. No, no, no. This is good. Like so, the Still Point I thought about as me. Because for the first time in my career, I wasn't being the dog and clown because these people were talented and they were moving around and doing stuff, right? And I was quiet and just taking photos. So it was my still point. So it's their movement at my still point. And then still as in camera still. Oh, man. And then still because everybody was still because of the pandemic. Uh, You're reaching on that last one. Deep, I'm sorry. Man, nah. Deep. <laughs> deep. Moving at the still point. It was going to be co- What did I want to call it? Uh, 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 I uh, couldn't find a title. This guy cannot let me hype his book up for anything. Could not find the, what, the original title? The one he did. What was it? I don't even remember. That just shows you how bad it was. You can't remember how, what the original title was. Put on your red shoes and dance the blues, maybe? No, no, no. no let's dance. Oh. <laughs> well, this does say an ode to dance at the bottom of it. So. Yeah. But... That well, aside, look. I will say this is a really well made book and well printed book. It's gorgeous images. It's got and, a and, and listen feel. seriously. If anybody buys the book, hit me up. And if you're in New York City, come over and I'll sign up for you. You know what you should do is do one of your Union Square things and see if people come with the book and shoot them after they get to get it signed. I'm gonna gonna shoot the book. Come on, shoot it. Shoot doing? the book. What are you doing? Shoot the book. What are you doing? You're you killing book. me, Bubby. Oh man. Oh yeah. Oh, here's, that's here's another mistake I made. Okay. If you do a book, don't share it equally <laughs> amongst <laughs> the 145 people that you've shot. So what he just because uh, you guys can't hear off camera, the proceeds of this book are shared with the dancers themselves. Every which single I guess one. It's great because they weren't working during the pandemic. I'm Correct. guessing, right? So, so when that's the book amazing. when the book makes 144 dollars, we'll all get a dollar. That's see that's. That's impactful. That's great. I, stupid. No, I like when images stupid. go beyond just the page. Yeah. I like it. I like. But you know, I, I just genuinely felt if I'm asking these people to come do something for me, I got to get back. And especially these people, are like you know, it's like as a photographer, you've been used and abused by everybody, potentially for your whole career, one way or another. So you got and I wasn't going to do it. I wasn't going to do it for these people. You got it. You got. You got swindled. I, they only have so many years of dancing. They got to document every every second yeah. of it. Don't you know? Yeah. No. Come on, man. I mean, I thought I was going to get like a hefty check for this, and I got a cup of coffee. I oh come on, man. Do I get a T-shirt? Hey, do we even have T-shirts? Good. Look, getting a T-shirt. Look, but we have. I, I try to put you in this as much as possible. We did this initially during the pandemic when you were in black and white on Zoom. We did it back then. I remember. Uh, you do. You've been doing demos here. We want to get you back in to do another class. That'd be great. Excellent. Let's and, do it. And uh, I, we had to have done something else. I, I remember. Either way, you know, you're in the atmosphere. You know. Yeah, I know. Listen, so. um, but just in 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 all, in all honesty, folks, and I know you know Seth. Um, Seth puts so much energy into doing what he does which I have major respect for, but really, I love Seth's photographs, and I, I sometimes wish you would take more of them. Uh, one day I'm going to shoot this man's portrait, and mm-hmm. we'll, we'll trade off. We'll All do right. that. All right. And you're going to come jump on our Complicated Things YouTube channel? Absolutely. Yeah, well, right. that was a long time ago you guys said we should do that. Yeah, but you know how time goes by. Yeah, and you just forgot. You go and get another tattoo, and oh, then it's another I three months to recover. While, In fact, uh, we there there's... Actually, I'm not going to get this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've been uh, I, the, lately. I've been getting tattooed whenever we go somewhere for the channel, and it's been a while. All right, three quick fire questions from Mark to Seth. Oh, do it. Let's All go. right, let's go. Uh, Desert Island for one week, one camera, one lens. Oof. Well, am I? Do I have supplemental things? Like, do I have a laptop to share? Do I have to do film? Like, what is it? One camera, one lens. As of right now. Well, if you choose a film camera, I'm going to give you some film. Obviously, you have batteries and stuff. One camera, one lens. One camera, one lens. Can I do one digital, one film? No. Oh my god. One. What would? I don't even. Man, this is. I'm not used to this. Hold on. Yeah, one I know. That's I know your, your answer. I would say the X100V, but like, I kind of feel like I got to throw down some credibility on film, and I kind of want to go with a Pentax 672. 
Ooh, very nice. You know, I think there's a, a how cartoony is that camera? By the way, it feels like a same camera, but like bigger, and you're like this, like a child. Is that called the Texas? No, which is the one that's called the Texas uh, Leica? Was oh. that the 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 big six by seven rangefinder? Not the Mamiya two. The, f- the Fuji. The Fuji the one. Fuji, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Actually, who shoot? Peter Lick shoots with it. I think. Yeah. He does yeah. those amazing lines. I'll, I'll go with that. Six Pentax six seven two. Why not? All right. Okay. What else we got? Okay. Um, <laughs> X one hundred V for digital. <laughs> one lunch, one lunch, and one lunch only for the next month. I think I, I, I do that anyway. It's 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 uh it's pizza. It's, <laughs> that's like all. I, if if I can't walk and eat it, I don't get it. So, um, I do I do enjoy enjoy artichoke pizza here in New York. I, that's my one of my faves. You got to lose one sense. Which sense would you lose? Oh, smell. There's just too many bad <laughs> ones. That's pretty good. You know, I should I, I should think about some more questions, but I'm going to leave it there. Oh yeah, I, yeah. I, I, what, would you, what would you do? I think smell, right? I mean, I feel like that's the one that irritates you the most, and you can't control it. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. And it's tied to your memory, and then you're like, you're really just annoyed. It sucks, yeah. but it's, it has to be smell. I don't want to stop touching and seeing and feeling. There is a question in the chat for you. Uh, Mike wants to know who was Mark's favorite and least favorite celebrity to photograph. Seth Miranda and Seth Miranda. Oh, um, first of all, I'm uh, not a celebrity, so it's like... Uh, you know, man, uh, Mike, Mike, was that from Mike? Michael Carbajal. Hey, Mike. Carbajal. Uh, Mike, it changes every day. It, 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 what Seth and I were saying earlier, it, so much is to do with the experience. Like, if, I, if I'm if i watching a movie and I see a Robin Williams movie, then you ask me the next day, who's your favorite celebrity, Robin Williams? Without a shadow of a doubt. Let me ask you that because you. But you, my you, least favorite, I can tell you, is Mitch McConnell. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. The um, because you have shot Robin Williams, and mm. I am curious. Do you feel a different sense when a celebrity passes away? Do you feel like after you've photographed them and you've got a portrait of them, is there like you have a bit more of a connection to when if there's some kind of tragedy? You know, I'm going to answer this with a a, a, a well. I'm going to answer it a different way. Um. I've been so super so incredibly fortunate to photograph people a few times right. in my career. Um, the biggest compliment I can get as a photographer is when I've spent ten minutes with you, and three years later, I spend another ten minutes, and you remember that ten minutes. Yeah. So I'm trying to genuinely make that a moment, something between us. So I have no idea if Robin Williams would remember who I am, but I felt in that ten minutes. I, I got not to know him because that's bullshit. You connected. But we had a connection and it broke my heart when he passed away. I can only imagine. Yeah. I, I feel like people know, feel like they know celebrities it's, through their work, but you actually were like in a minute with them. Yeah. And, you know, the, the, you know, and, you know, sometimes like um, you photograph somebody and they pass away. Um, Anthony Bourdain, right? Right. I photographed three or four times. Last time I photographed him was probably my favorite pictures. Um, and he smiled for me, even though he told me three times before, don't even ask. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Chef, give us a smile. Fuck off, Mark. Oh. I'm not smiling, Mark. Come on, Chef. Did you get him to or it naturally happened? Kind of broke a smile because I was messing with him so much. I kept offering him crackers. Like, You're hungry, you want a cracker? And eventually, I go bring Anthony Bourdain yeah, crackers. crackers. What kind of crackers? I think the free ones you get with <laughs> the chicken noodle soup from the delis. You oh, know, the little, those little squares. So I got him to crack a smile. I made the photograph, and I loved it. And I was like, hey, I got it. And then, sadly, he passed away. And I look at that photograph now, and in retrospect, I see such sadness in his eyes yeah. that I'm like kicking myself that I didn't ever, not that I could have done anything or right. feel like I could have, but just. You know, you don't notice it. You, you know, listen, when I go back and listen to some of the conversation, of some of the Rob Moon's conversation I have, we have on uh, audio, and I, l- I listen to some of that conversation, and I'm just like, wow. Well, you, you, just, you, you have just, no idea what someone's walking into your man. studio with. You don't that, know what I always, that day. I always give them a break. You know, somebody says, oh, they're, they're, they're an a-hole. I'm like, come on, man. You, you met them for five minutes. Mm-hmm. You don't know what happened that yeah. morning. I mean, you meet me on a Tuesday morning after my wife and I have, you know, had an argument over what my son's going to have for breakfast and I'm in a bad mood. I'm going to be the biggest. Yeah. Ask him, you know, <laughs> you know, like, you know, you know, so I always give 
every human being as much as I can to benefit the day. Well, that's a Rob Williams quote. I think it's something like, you have no idea what struggle someone's facing, so don't, you know, don't jump to conclusions about I, them. He got that from me. Oh, yeah? No, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> that was the shadiest thing. There is well, another question in the chat, but we are we are wrapping up here, guys. So if you have any questions, now's the time. Uh, Hafoto is asking, what's Mark's favorite thing to photograph other than people, assuming he enjoys photographing people? <laughs> uh, that's a very funny question. Uh, oh, man. Is it like family for you? I feel like you... you oh, no, that's people, I guess. Nah, um, what if you were on a desert island with nothing, no one to shoot? What would you shoot? I sh I'd fail miserably. You I'd want to chase those crabs? Well, it, was a, it, was it was like the pandemic. Was like, uh, I'm going to do landscapes. Um, I got into macro during uh, yeah, pandemic. Yeah, I, I, for about 14 seconds. Yeah, and then you're like, like, all right, yeah, I got that well, grain that of good. salt. Yeah, <laughs> uh, so one thing, one thing that I have been photographing a little more of is my son's been doing some uh, equestrian stuff. Oh, and uh, I've been around some horses. And although I haven't achieved any good photos of a horse... Um, there was one I liked from the back, um, and everyone was just looking at me going, Mark, it's a horse's ass. And I'm like, I know, but but the light's nice. So I would say that I'm going to spend... <laughs> he thinks I'm kidding, man. I'm not kidding. Yeah, but the light's nice. I'm going to bring this photo up. I love you, Mark. So, uh, so yeah, so um, I, have been, I have been thinking about shooting some more horses. I, I think you would do amazing black and white horse horses. portraits. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to try. Um, I was going to say something, but we don't have time. I'll wait for the next time. Uh, let me find out this horse's ass picture. <laughs> I, all right. No, it's a good picture. This is the highlight of my career, everybody. <laughs> Mark Where? Man looking for a horse. Where, it might be in downloads. Oh, man. Listen, if while he's doing oh, that. Look, 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 look. Yeah, it is nice. It's a nice horse's <laughs> ass, right? I kind of like it as a square like that, though. Oh, yeah? You know what I'm saying? Like oh, it could do a square. But that, look, honestly, where's the camera? I get I get it. See? I get Horse's it. Horse's ass. Listen, I'm, I'm, listen I, I, I can appreciate a nice one every now and then. <laughs> I can appreciate uh, it. I said it to somebody the other day, and she said, oh, I see I've lost a few pounds. So I thought, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you find this picture of my ex-wife? And it's like, ah. Uh. Oh. Listen, if you guys didn't know about Mark, man, now you do. Hit his links down there. Don't forget, this QR code takes you to the Adderall Events page where everything that comes out of this event space is going live right there. So that's our other channel. That's a new channel. You're probably mm -hmm. not following it. But if you're new to this channel, hit subscribe. We do stuff like this all the time. A lot of free education on here, new product releases. I think the next one is Anya. Anya Auntie is going to be my next one next week. She's a fine art photographer, really amazing stuff, uh, especially if you're into, like, digital editing and things like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, Mark. Seth Miranda, honestly, man, you, you, there's a lot of appreciation for what you do, and it's people like you that uh, really help to, to make people understand what they should be doing or what they should be trying to do in photography, and I appreciate that. No, I appreciate that. And, I mean, it, it's a big word. It's going from, like, a major... Uh, name like you and, and you're a legend you're a total legend i'm i'm honored that we can like have a rapport and uh a legend in my own underwear uh, see that's that's the key to it the, he he just goes like i'm not that that's like that's why people are like ah eh, you can connect with this guy but um you know i remember coming home from the white house after shooting the president one day right and i come just do this just do this yeah. <laughs> just, just just come on flex it up you have uh, to flex while you're no, no, no. so this is, this is this is this is about that so i am i am hyped man I've just photographed President of the United <laughs> States of America in the White House. I come home by 8 o'clock at night, and I open the door. I say, hey, doll, I'm home. She goes, you didn't unload the dishwasher. You have to feed the dog. <laughs> You've got to get the kid in bed. Um, I've got no laundry for him tomorrow. We've got to do the sheets right now. And I'm just like, uh-huh. That is why I have no ego, because the people around me wonderfully keep me so in check. And I, I really appreciate that. It, see, that's a Netflix series. Like, a, just a, a hardcore top-end photographer, like, coming down to earth after doing the shoot. Now, now, my wife's not trying to put me down. It's just like, this is, down, you, bringing it this, this is what you do. We yeah. accept that. We love you for what you do. But you know what? You haven't unloaded the dishwasher. That's, it. that's pathetic. How are you going to leave that for her? Exactly. Unbelievable. She's this is the, the kind best. Of guy. This is the kind of guy. Listen, check out his book, Movement at the Still Point. Uh, it's available pretty much everywhere. Or? Everywhere where books are sold.
We'll, uh, we'll maybe we'll throw a pin comment down there or something with the link. But thank you so much for the book. First of all, you're gonna have to sign my famous wall of guys that have been here before. Okay. And uh, can I go to the restroom first? Oh come on. Hang on. Man. You're not being paid for this. Okay, I'm good. We're never getting out of here alive. All right, I'm out of here, guys. Thank you so much. We'll see you next week, eleven o'clock. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Wednesday. Seth. Go follow this guy, and uh, we will see you. I think what's tomorrow, Gavin? Gavin Hoey is live tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern time on this channel. And don't forget to hit up the Adderall Events channel, new channel. Go hit subscribe. Thank you so much, and we will see you next time. Later.